Good morning. Welcome to Guest Baptist Church this morning. It's good to have each of you with us. I do have a few announcements this morning. Remember that uh, we have the church officer sign-up sheet. It will be in the foyer after service this morning. If you have uh, been thinking about, praying about signing up for an office, whether it's teaching Sunday school, uh, building and grounds, whatever it is, this sign-up sheet will be in the foyer uh, after service this morning. If you don't think there's a job for you, there is. Uh, if there's not a job that you think fits your talents, we will find you a job. Okay? So if whatever it is, if you feel like you want to serve in some capacity, sign up on this sheet or let a deacon know, Brother Nick know, and we will find something for you to do. Uh, invite you to come back tonight. Brother Jacob Mitchell will be preaching tonight, so we invite you back at 6 o'clock for that. Uh, a few weeks from now, we will have a conference on September the 17th. There are other sign-up sheets in the foyer. We have uh, Pee Wee football sign-ups. On that sheet, we have one varsity game that we're working. That sign-up sheet is there. Uh, I think we have a nursery. If you're interested in helping with the nursery, uh, there's a special place in heaven for nursery workers, just in case you didn't know that. So there's a sign-up sheet back there for that. So, again, lots of things going on. Just check that as you head out the door this morning. Uh, I have a, a note here. Anyone interested in being on the junior drama team, that is ages 6 to 12, need to meet with the Bryans after church, and that would be the children and the parents. So if that is you and, or your child, then uh, immediately after service this morning. Uh, one last thing I tried to get to several of you uh, that fit this, but if you are in what would be the young adult Sunday school class, um, that is the Sunday school class that I teach, down on the very end, we are going to have uh, a get-together at our house this Saturday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to watch football, have finger foods, just fellowship. So if you fit in that class, we would love to have you Saturday night at 6. I'm sorry? Oh, yes, finger foods, whatever uh, makes you happy. But we're just going to get together and have a good time. Are there any other announcements this morning that I may have missed? Sure. Okay, so that is September the 19th, a Tuesday night. Ladies uh, get together here at the church. So uh, just, again, check all the sign-up sheets in the foyer. Anyone else? Do remember, we have Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6. We eat at 5.30. Uh, you're missing out if you're not coming, so we invite you for that. Uh, we do have uh, church text reminders. You can see Meg Jones if you would like to sign up. And we have snacks for students. There's a bucket in the back. Or you can see Miss Mitchell for that. And lastly, we do have a nursery that you can use for children up to five. If there is nothing further, I appreciate it. Thank you.
forward, move forward. Remember this, remember this. Remember this. Unspoken. Any other unspoken prayer requests this morning? Several. Remember those. Remember those. Remember this. Remember this. Continue to remember that. to pray for this morning. I ask you to remember those. We do got some church members that are traveling this weekend. Uh, I ask you to remember those who couldn't be here for whatever reason. Give them traveling, traveling grace there. If you love Jesus, say amen. 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 I'm going to invite you to stand with me. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then after that, a time of fellowship, and then we're going to have a time of children's church. All right, let's pray this morning. Father, we come to you. God, we just, uh, we love you this morning. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, you have been so, so good to us. And Father, we just, uh, we just praise you this morning, God. What a privilege and opportunity it is to be in your house with your people. God, we thank you for each one that's here. God, I ask you to bless them for being here, God. And God, I pray that, uh, that you would meet with us this morning, Father God. We understand that everything is in vain in this place, God, if you don't meet with us. So God, we invite you uh, to be in here with us this morning. Father God, we lift each of these prayer requests up to you, God, those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are away from you, Father God, those that are traveling, God, you know each and every situation, each and every detail, and God, we just ask you to touch and bless as only you can. God, we pray for the remainder of the service, God, I pray that you would be in each song, I pray that you would be in the preaching, the singing, God, whatever is going to take place, God, we pray that you would be in the midst of it, and God, we're going to give you all the glory for it. God, again, we thank you. God, you're so, so good, and God, we praise you this morning. God, most of all this morning, we want to thank you for your son, Jesus, and what he accomplished at the cross at Calvary. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. Amen.
The light in the window, a table set of splendor, and someone standing by the open door. Well, I can see a crystal river. I must be near forever, Lord. I've never been this homesick before. Now see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can see my father standing at the door. This world has been a mystery. I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Well, I can see the family together. Sweet faces so familiar. And no one's old and feeble anymore. And this old awesome heart is crying. Think I spread my wings for flying. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Now see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can't see my father. He's standing at the door. This world has been a mystery. I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Now see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I can't see my father. He's standing at the door. This world has been a mystery. I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, I've never been this homesick before. Lord, I've never been this homesick Amen. Amen. I really hate to try to follow that, but uh, we'll see. Ain't God good? Amen. He is good. Now, he's uh, almost been a theme this morning about heaven. I'm glad we've got a new home. Amen. I'm glad we got a place to go when this old world's over. Amen. And uh, what a what a blessing that is. And uh, I've heard a guy preach another day. He said, I don't believe anybody's ever preached heaven as good as heaven's going to be. And I can tell you that they hadn't done it. We can't imagine uh, how it's going to be. And I'm just, uh, I'm thankful for that. Thankful for that. If you got your Bibles this morning, we're going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12. While you're turning there, I wonder if anybody's got a, testimony this morning they'd like to share. Anybody? Amen. Man. Anybody else? Bless you. Amen. Anybody else? Well, if not, uh, I'm going to read one verse, and then we're going to go through several verses. But uh, if you would, please stand one more time. First Corinthians 12, 
verse number 12, preaching on this subject, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The Bible says this, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Again, for this day, this time, Father God, we thank you for everything that's happened thus far in this service. And God, I pray now as we open your word, God, you'd speak to us. God, I pray you would get me out of the way, decrease me, increase your Holy Spirit this morning, Father God. And God, I pray that you would help us to understand this morning, God, that we are the body of Christ. We are of one body. And God, I pray that, that you would help us, God, to examine our lives and examine our hearts, God. And if there's something that, that you'd have us to do this morning, oh God, I pray that we would surrender and do that. And God, I pray that you would just have that own way uh, during this service, God. I pray that if there's one in here that's lost this morning, God, I pray that something may be said, God, it would prick their heart. And God, I pray that you would just, uh, you, you would just, just have that own way. And God, we're going to give you all the glory. We love you and we praise you and we thank you. And it's in Christ's name that I pray and all God's children say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. If you have been saved, blood-bought, and born again by the grace of God, you're in the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ is not limited to denomination. It's not limited to what church you go to. It's not limited to uh, any other thing. It's, it's, it's limited to the fact, have you been blood-bought and born again Amen. by the grace of God? And if you have been, then you're a part of the body. And if you're a part of the body, then you got a job to do. How about that? Then you got a job to do. And it's been on my mind a little bit this week, and, and I couldn't help but think. We got, we got church election coming up, the officers to fill, Sunday school classes, as Ryan mentioned. We're going we're gonna to have this sheet out front uh, this morning. And I don't want you to think this is, a, this is a message that Brother Nick's trying to guilt me into taking a Sunday school class that nobody else wants to take. That is not at all what I'm trying to do this morning. But here's what I want to. Uh, here, here, here's the intent behind this, brother Charlie, is the fact that you ain't going. We talked to the kids about it this morning. You're not going to have complete satisfaction and fulfillment in your life until you surrender to Him and to, and to do what He has called you to do and leading you to do. And so, uh, just for a little while, I want to talk about the body of Christ, the importance of the body, uh, the complexity of the body, and uh, and the camaraderie of the body. And then we will uh, we'll survey this and we'll go about our ways. Uh, but but the body. Is a complex thing. You know that? I, I, I can't help but uh, thank Paul in his writing, the fact that he, inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course, the, the, the fact that he compared the church to a body. He goes on. Let's read a few verses and we'll talk about it. It says, For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ." For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So he says, he, he, he lets us know that the the uh, the church is compared to the body. The body is a complex thing. Y'all know that. I looked up some things about our bodies. The body, when you're born as an infant, has 270 bones in it. 270 bones as, as you mature and come into adult those that could it decreases to 206 between 206 and 213 depending how your bones fuse together and I don't know how all that works so please don't ask right but uh, but but some of those bones do fuse together just to make one bone that's a lot of bones in your body you know that that's a lot of bone who's our youngest baby in here they're in the nursery uh, but just think about that. that that little infant if you've had a baby and you've held a baby 270 bones in there that, that constructs the body of that. In your body, there are 78 organs. 78 organs. Five of them. Uh, the, the main five is, is the heart, the brain, the kidneys, the liver, and the lungs. But there's besides those five, there's 73 more that help your body to function and, 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 and to work like it should. God designed it like that. And I'm not getting into a creation sermon this morning. Those things just didn't happen. Amen. God intricately designed your body as he would have it, and it works. Have you ever just stopped and pondered at how the body works? Is it not unbelievable how complex the body is and how it all works together? I think I've shared this before, but I, I, was, I, was, 
I, I was a young guy, and I was an interim pastor at Kelly's Chapel, and I was, I was teaching on creation. It was on a Wednesday night, and, and I said, the body's not like a car. I said, it don't run on gasoline. And the body's not like a, a, a light bulb. It don't run on electricity. I said, what does the body run off of? And one old deacon back there, he said, beans and taters. What he said. <laughs> I said, you're right. You're right. We don't, we don't run off those things. Well, it's, it is, it's amazing how God created our bodies and designed us. So complex. In our bodies, there's 600 muscles. 600 muscles in your body. The brain, the most complex organ of any animal, the human brain has, has around 100 billion nerve cells in your brain. And all those are connected and intertwined. And you're, any electricians in here has ever wired something up and you got eight wires in something, you can imagine how difficult that is. What about 100 billion that is designed to send signals to your brain and how your brain uh, is able to relay pain and hunger and all those type things? Ain't it, ain't it crazy how complex our bodies are? Amen. They are. And to think about how complex... Our bodies are. That's what the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to compare the church to. The church is a complex thing. It's, it's one. Your body is made up of all those things, but, it, but, it's, but it's one body, right? And we don't see all those things working behind the scenes and all that. Same thing with the church. We're one. Praise God, we're one, right? Amen. And not just guests, but I'm talking about everybody that's ever been saved. We're part of the church. Amen. Now, they're, they're separate churches. We're we're. We're a separate church from those folks. But inside of here, we're one body. We're to work. It's a complex thing that goes on. There's many things that happen, many things that, that, that for, for things to work like they should. He goes on to say this in verse 15. He said, If the foot shall say, Because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not the eye of a body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, listen to this, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? If you could, if you could hear mama turn on a cake and you could see it, but you couldn't smell it, that'd be terrible, would it not? It'd be terrible if, if you couldn't taste it. But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now are they many members, but yet one body. And I just want us to ponder on this for just a second this morning and to consider... What part of this church body God's calling you to do, to be? Amen. Amen. What's he calling or leading you to do? There's been times in my life that I've struggled with that. He called me to preach. I didn't want to preach. I don't like standing up in front of people, especially when they're all looking at me, kind of like y'all are right now. It's not my favorite thing. But I had to deal with that. You may be dealing with something like that this morning. We got this sheet here. And I can't count these jobs that fast, but there's, there's a lot of different jobs on this sheet this morning. And as I pondered that thought this week, I, I come up here one day and I was looking at that, about all the different jobs that happen in a church and how important that they are in their own, the, the, their own aspect. I couldn't help but remember Raiden at his baptism. Uh, had a Holy Spirit moment there. The Lord just... He just flew all over me. I, I, I just never, never forget. And we was there at Kelly's Chapel, and he had got saved. It was Easter. It was Easter Sunday, and we dedicated Jack to the Lord that morning. And and Raiden got baptized. It's just one of them days, Charlie. I just, you just felt like you walking on air, you know. And I couldn't help but think as we got in the baptistry of all the, 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 the people that had poured into Raiden's life that maybe had helped him get to the point where he had been saved and was now getting baptized. And I was, and they didn't even know they were pouring into it. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't have, as I got up there, I just I just started it just started coming out. You know what I mean? What what about his what about his Sunday school teacher that showed up every Sunday morning and taught Sunday school? What about her? That's probably Sunday she didn't want to show up. Weeks she didn't have time to prepare, but she did week after week after week. What about what what about the, the folks on Wednesday night that prepared the meal? Man, they they may they probably didn't want to do that every week, but they did. 
that we're faithful to that? What about the ladies that, that come to the church and clean the bathroom so we'd have a clean place to go to the bathroom when he come to church? How about that? He didn't dread going to church because of that. What about the guy that cut the grass outside where he was able to go outside after they had their lesson and went out there and they, and they played and they, they were able to grow with one another socially before he was even saying, all those things. And you say, Brother Nick, that's silly. No, that's not silly. That's how it works. It all works together. Amen. God is in the midst of it all. Amen. What's God calling you to do? The impact that you can have. They's going, Charlie, I'm, I believe when we get to heaven, brother. I believe, and I may be wrong, but there's going to be people that you could have impacted or have impacted that are going to come up to you and say, Brother, I appreciate you. You didn't even know the difference that you were making in my life when you made a stand. You didn't know the difference in my life that you made when you was just, you was just at church every Sunday morning and made, that made a difference in my life. You don't know the kind of people that you impact on a daily basis that they may never say nothing to you on this side of glory, but if you just keep living for God, I believe there's going to come a day that God's going to let you know about those things. Amen. Are you being faithful right now? Amen. Are you being a part of the body that God has called you to be? I think there's two reasons here. So there's probably more, but all my little brain come up was with two reasons why, why, why Paul compared it to the body. First reason, the church is not something that can be conducted or ran by one or two people. Amen. It just can't do it. Amen. Neither can your body function, just one or two members of it. No, no. Church is the same way. It ain't something one or two people can do. I assure you that. Amen. I assure you that. I think the second thing is to prove that we're, we're all different. Amen? Amen? We're all different. He talks about the eye and the hand and the hand and the foot and not being the same thing. And because you ever heard anybody complain about stuff, don't be a complainer. Just don't do it. As your pastor, I love you. Just If you're not a hand, you ain't a hand, okay? I'm just saying. Amen. We see the complexity of the body. And he gets to verse 19. If we're all, I'm sorry, verse 20. But now there are many members but yet one body. We move on to verse 21. I think we move into the fact that the body is full of camaraderie. The body is full of camaraderie. Camaraderie, camaraderie is that, that intense, intimate relationship that you have with somebody, a friend or a, or a loved one or something like that. Can you, can you imagine the camaraderie that goes on into our bodies, that things work together? Listen to what it says here in verse 21. The eye can't say to the hand that I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Amen. Amen. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism, no, uh, no, no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Listen to this. And, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. He talks about the camaraderie of the body. I think you can compare it to like, a, like it's your job. You think about your job. If you were the only one at your job doing your job, your job probably wouldn't get done. Amen? Because somebody before you has to do their job. You think about a, about a, about a football team, okay? It ain't just the running back that gets the job done. It ain't just the line. If there was no line, then the running back couldn't run. If there was no running back, then there was the line blocking for, right? Like, you think about that. I couldn't help but think about folks that, that have won the Heisman Trophy in the past. If you don't know what that is, the Heisman Trophy is the best college football player of the year. 
And one of the things that all of them, a lot of them thank God and I praise God when they do on national television. They don't always do that. But one thing that every one of them that has ever won the Heisman Trophy says when he gets up there, I want to thank my teammates. I want to thank, you know why? Because he realizes that it ain't him that got the job done. He could not perform at the level that he should have performed if his teammates would not have been there and done what they what they've done there's camaraderie on the team there's camaraderie uh, at your job there's camaraderie in your body think about how your body works together think about how your eyes see something they want to pick it up and your hand picks it up and then you either eat it or smell it or i don't know what you do with it but it all works together right don't laugh at me i'm just trying to, i'm just kidding but the camaraderie of your body is the camaraderie of the church the camaraderie of the church i couldn't help but think uh about how our bodies we can see certain functions of our body. We can see our hands move. We can see our see eyes and, and all of that. But there's things happening on the inside of us that nobody can see. Our hearts beat. If your heart wasn't beating, none of this other would work, right? Amen. Your brain's thinking. Your lungs are, are doing what your lungs do and, and all that type of stuff. There, there's things that happen inside of a church that nobody sees. There, there's, a, there's a nursery full of kids back there right now. Miss Caitlin and Kendall's back there, I believe. They're back there. Nobody's seeing that. I'm going to tell you something. It takes that to get it done. It's giving you mamas and daddies time to sit out here and get fed a little bit. There's things that happen in church that nobody sees. And what, what Paul's saying right there is just because nobody sees those things happen don't mean that they're not important. They are important. Amen. Amen. They are important. Those things have got to be done as well. And as mentioned earlier, we're not all going to be a hand. We're not all going to be a foot. We're not all going to be an eye. But I'm going to tell you something. Every part is needed. Every part is needed. And just because God's laying it on your heart to do something, whether it be, as Ryan said, building and grounds, whether it be whatever, whatever, just do it. God sees it. And that's what matters. It don't matter if everybody else sees it or not. God sees it. Amen. And God's the one that honors it. God's the one that gives the increase because of it. The body is complex. The body is full of camaraderie. And lastly, we see that the body is crucial. The body is crucial. Listen to verse 27. Now ye are the what? The body of Christ. You know why the body is crucial? Because the body is Christ. We are now. Jesus, praise God, he, was, he lived, he died, he rose again. Walked among us for 40 days. Now he's where? He's ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me and you. Praise the Lord. He's interceding for us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Now, so guess who does Christ's work now? The work that he did where, where he preached and where he loved on them and where he showed compassion and grace and, and gave and all those. Guess whose job that is now? That's our job. Amen. We're now his hands. We're now his feet. We're now his mouth. It is our job. The body is crucial because the body is Christ. How are you representing him? How are you representing him? Are you doing that which he's called you to do? Now, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, listen to this, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are you all apostles? Are y'all preachers? No. No. Y'all can talk, I promise. No. Are you all prophets? No. Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And the obvious answer to all of these is no, we're not. But just because we answer no to those things does not mean God wants to use us. Amen. Amen. He wants to. See, Paul's writing to this church, this Corinthian church, and they're trying to establish a church, uh, trying to establish some organization among them, and he's trying to tell them, look, guys, not all of you can be the preacher. Not all of you can be the pastor. If they had a pastor for two months, they wouldn't none of them wanted to be the pastor. Amen? But then Paul says something here. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. That, that's a... Uh, Different people commentate that different. You know what I think? Here's what I think. I agree with Tony Evans, okay? I believe it's okay to want to be something great for God. Amen? Amen. I believe it's, it's great to want to do something that everybody's going to see and everybody's going to say, you know what? He was a part of that. It's okay to do that. 
It's okay to dream those things. But am I being faithful right now where God can trust me to do something great later on down the road? I listened to a guy, I was telling the, the deacons and Josh about it, uh, Larry Brown's his name, he's, a, he's an old preacher, he's passed away now, a lot of you know C.T. Townsend, he was the pastor, of, he started that church I believe, and, and he was preaching, and he was talking about how that when he first got saved, he was about 22 when he first got saved, and, and he got in church and became a member of that church and wanted to do something for God, and they, they, was, they had a coordinator of that at their church, and he goes to the coordinator, and he said, uh, he said hey, I want a job, he said, I ain't been saved like five days okay anybody knows nobody's gonna give you a job but you know anyways well, he goes up to him this coordinator he calls him a novice he said i didn't know what a novice was he said i was a mechanic i wasn't didn't didn't have a real good vocabulary he said i got mad at him he said you called me a what he said you're a novice and he said i got he said i cornered him up he said, I was, we was fixing to go. He, his exact words were, he looked like he wanted some of me, and I was ready to give some away, is what he said. And uh, he said, about that time, me and him's having a pretty intense conversation, and the preacher comes around. He said, what in the world are y'all doing? And he said, tell him what you called me, preacher, or deacon, or whatever he was. He said, I called him a novice. He said, see, he called me of that again. He said, that's nothing bad. He said, it just means that, 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 you're, that you're new at this. You're new at this. He said, well, he won't give me a job. He said, well, I've got you a job. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm going to put you on the steeple inspection committee. And he said, okay. And he said, so he got, put me on the, he said, me and two old guys that could barely see that sit in the back of the church. He said, we're on the steeple inspection committee. He said, so for the next six weeks, he said, every Sunday when I'd get to church, he said, I'd get out there and I'd look. I'd inspect. He said, there wasn't no steeple falling on us. He said, not on my watch. He said, I was going to do my job what God had called me to do. Amen. And he said, every Sunday, he said, a preacher would get up to preach, and he said, he said, I used to sit in the back. He said, I got saved. He said, I figured if God could touch you at the back, he could really touch you at the front. He said, so I moved to the front, and he said, the preacher would get up to preach, and he said, I'd give him a big thumbs up. I said, steeple's good this morning, preacher. He said, six weeks I did that. He said, one Sunday, the preacher got me after church. He said, I tell you what, if you're going to be faithful, to be on the steeple inspection committee, you can probably help me teach a Sunday school class. And he said, I sat under his care for about a year under that. And he said, yes, next thing I know, God's done called me to preach, and I'm pastoring a church a little bit later on. Amen. He said, you know why? He said, because I desired to have a job. Amen. I desired to work for God. And if God could trust me to inspect a steeple, God could probably trust me with the King James Bible to preach it like it ought to be preached. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Are you faithful where God's got you right now? Do you desire to do something for God? Man, God's, God's been good to us this past church year. You know what? Man, he's been good. We've seen folks saved. We've, we've baptized a lot of folks. We, we've got new members in. Man, it's just, it's just been a blessing. And I guess it'd be easy just to sit here and say, you know what? That's good enough, God. We're going to take a year off, and we're just, we're just going to be complacent. But you know what? I ain't satisfied with that. Are y'all? God's been too good for us to be complacent. God's been too good for us to sit on our hands and do nothing. God's calling us to do something greater. I believe there's more people that need to be saved. I believe there's more people that need to get inside of a church. I believe there's more, more people that need to hear the gospel. And it's our, we are the body. We are the body. We are the hands. We are the feet. We are the mouth. Are you doing what God has called you to do this morning? Are you being the part of the body that he would have you to be? Verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. I want to challenge you this morning to inspect your heart. And if God's laid it on you to do something, do it. Amen. Surrender to what he's called you to do. There may be somebody here that's struggling with a call to preach. I'm going to tell you something. Surrender. It ain't always easy. Amen. It ain't always. It's always blessed, though. I can tell you that. If he's in it. Whatever he's calling and leading you to do, would you come this morning? We're going to have this. this